And for more on this DA story, we're joined on the line now by the party's national spokesperson, Asoli Malati. Thanks so much for your time this morning, Mr. Malati. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Mr. Malati, you've had time to at least sleep on it, literally. And uh, yesterday's developments, of course, you know, coming as a bit of a surprise, but not too much of a surprise to many, given the developments in the Democratic Alliance over the last week. But what does the party have to say this morning in terms of what transpired this week? Well, I think in politics and in life, you, you deal with situations better when you anticipate um, different scenarios and as much as it was a surprise yesterday the announcement by both um, my colleagues um, in the form of Muslim Armani and Afro Trollip um, that they expressed their intention to step down um, it, it, it was a surprise indeed for, 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 for the organization but we accepted those designations because ultimately they made um, individual choices and understandably so given the ongoing debate that has been taking place internally in the organization particularly in response to um, the review panel report which had some recommendations about leadership in there so in terms of the way forward now what will happen is that this morning the party's federal executive will convene again in order to discuss the legal opinion or legal advice that um, we had sought um, as of yesterday with regards to what happens in terms of the process for an interim leader because the way our constitution is currently designed, it makes no provision whatsoever for who would um, succeed to the position of the leader in the event that both the leader and the federal and the federal chairperson, who in terms of the current constitution is the automated um, replacement to the leader in between congresses, uh, will happen. So that is what will be happening today in terms of making sure that we operate with an indication or a process that will ultimately ensure we have an interim leader before we go to Congress, which the party has resolved that it would happen early next year. So speaking of that uh, uh, review panel uh, report, is it true that uh, the former party leader, Tony Leon, was actually asked to go and speak to Musi Maimane to ask him to step aside? The, no, it's, 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 it's not true. Uh, the long and short of it is not true. Uh, the, the facts around the situation is that a review panel was appointed by the leader with the backing of federal executive, the review panel included three individuals. It was chaired by Ryan Kuti, who was the former CEO of the organization, someone who served the party in different capacities in the past. Um, Tony Leon was a panel member of that panel, and Michael Leroux. So as it would be the case, in the course of their completion of their reports, they met with the leader, in order to update him about the progress of their report. So that report that um, speculated about um, this rumor that they asked the leader to step down was wholly incorrect and goes wholly wrong. So just a final one with regard to the key findings of that report, and uh, some of them are really scathing. Does the party or should the party be taking collective responsibility? And when one looks at uh, some of those key findings, like uh, a lack of clarity about the party's vision and direction, confusion about the party's position on key issues, and it goes on. And uh, what sort of role do you think uh, someone like Helen Zilla plays in sowing further division, perhaps, within a party that already seems to be struggling to find a way to move forward coherently? I think the biggest mistake um, many um, external parties make is to look at the organization through the prism of in individualizing um, certain personalities and their contribution in the organization. The review panel made several findings about the state of the organization, about our performance during the election, about policy uncertainty in the organization, about the structures of leadership in the organization. 
And those resolu- those findings were then um, summarized in recommendations which Federal Council debated over the weekend and adopted re- resolutions in response to them. And part of the, re- the resolutions that Federal Council adopted was the need to go to an early Congress so that the, 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 the discussion around the leadership can be um, explored there because Congress is where leaders are elected and there was a resolution around a policy conference ahead of Congress so that the party can have an opportunity to settle the internal policy debates um, so that we're going to a Congress with one clear set of policies that are unanimously agreed by the organization. And there was another rec- resolution around constitutional ad- amendments that the party needed to effect leading up to Congress because some of the recommendations will have a restructuring of the political office bearers um, in the organization, such as, for instance, the scraping of the position of federal chair person and matching it with the federal council chairperson so that they are there for deputies. So all these um, recommendations affect the party at different layers and levels and will of course include the role of different leaders across the board. It wasn't a report per se to look at the individual performance of the leader or the federal council chairperson or the current federal council chairperson. Well, Mr. Malazzi, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Soli Malazzi is the national spokesperson of the Democratic Alliance. And we'll talk more about this, getting some analysis on what's going on in the Democratic Alliance uh, between 6.30 and 7. So do stay with us for that.